uh, and this will give us a net cash flow of 47,500. And an increase in equity, we believe, of minimum 260,000 pound. I have to say, I spent about six weeks, day and night, uh, on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, every Google search you could possibly do. Uh, I think the analogy Sarah used was I kissed a lot of frogs, I went down a lot of rabbit holes. Portfolio value, we believe, is 1375. Based on the figures of today, that's probably conservative, but you know, it isn't our intention to flip this, but that gives us a certain comfort that we can go and, and uh, refinance this uh, whenever we wish to. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together as we welcome Dermot and Sarah Clark. Andy. Hi both. Can you we've hear got me? we've got you loud and clear, thank you. Okay, you'd like me to share my screen, I assume. Yes, please, thank you. Can everybody see that? We've got it perfectly. Thank you, Dermot. Very good. Okay, so just going to briefly go through uh, who we are. Let's go a page down. Yeah, so this beautiful picture up on the right-hand side, uh, believe it or not, is a sunny day in Ireland where I'm from. Um, very unusual day. It's not normally like that. We decided we were there one day in all these, and this just happened to be the one that suited us. So a little bit about ourselves. As you can probably tell from my name and my accent, I'm Irish. Um, I'm an expat, I suppose, most of my life. I qualified in 1994 as an engineer, decided to go abroad for a year to Switzerland, and I have never returned. Um, so Switzerland until 2012. Uh, and at the moment, I, I live between Saudi Arabia and the UAE. I uh, commute between, between two different jobs there. Sarah is British. Uh, she's based in the UK up to 2016, and she's been living here in Dubai ever since that. Um, and I think a little bit before we go into what we've done is how we've got here. So we've had reasonable experience in property before. Uh, about 25 years ago, I invested in Greenfield Development in Ireland. Uh, it was a very enriching experience in that we have a nice house out of it. Uh, but from a financial point of view, uh, it wasn't a great experience, uh, but we learned a lot, so much so that we've never actually tried to do it since, uh, remotely. Um, in 2016, um, I had lived in Switzerland. Uh, as, as any of you who have worked in the Middle East realise, you know, it's, it's a great standard of living. Um, but unlike the UK, there is no pension scheme, there's no NI, so you really have to look after your future. So we decided that I would cash in my Swiss pension uh, and invest in UK property, which I did. Uh, if you're an expat, um, the incentive to invest in UK property is off plan, which I did. So I invested in London and Manchester uh, with mixed results. We've had COVID, we've had Brexit, we've had Crossrail. Uh, I've had a project go into administration. So it's fair to say that the investment in, in those properties for our, um, for our pension and for our, our, our living standard hasn't come to fruition yet. Uh, so I think based on that, we decided, look, the first two times weren't a massive success third time lucky or maybe third time smarter and, and we would do it again. So the, the idea behind us joining MMB2 was to provide a income for ourselves, both in retirement, but also you know, for, for the rest of our lives. Uh, we, we eventually want to go home. And the idea of this is we've set ourselves specific goals. And once we've reached those goals, then we, we can pack up with what we're doing and, and take life a little bit easier and go into property full time. One of the key challenges, and, and I know there's a couple of people on here like Sunil that would have, is, is the FX effect. So we're gonna show you a portfolio that we purchased in January. Um, I, I looked this morning, if I was to purchase it today, it would cost me 3% less. So when you are earning in, in our case, US dollars, we're investing in sterling, and we're going to actually meet our living costs in euros. You spend a lot of time looking at uh, exchange rates, at apps, trying to second guess the market. And I guess what we want to say by this is at some stage, you have to stop doing that. We probably were guilty of overdoing that. And uh, we just kind of bit the bullet and decided we would join MMB2 uh, and try to um, you know, build, a, build a future for ourselves and build a steady income. So we did that in March, April. As everybody remembers, uh, travel was very restricted due to COVID. Uh, so most of the journey we have done has been on a laptop, on telephone calls, on emails, and, uh, and Sarah's, Sarah's mother thankfully went and, and checked out some properties for us. But this primarily has been almost been an internet search for the last 12 months. Uh, the fact we couldn't travel meant we had a lot of time to invest in this. 
Uh, there's also the fact we couldn't travel actually meant that we had to trust on advisors. Uh, many of the properties we've only seen after we purchased them and only from the outside. So this really is a hands-off investment and uh, is one that kind of was a leap of faith, but one now that we're very happy we've gone off. So a little bit about what we've done. So in 2021, uh, we took some advice. We decided to set up a company called Esk Investments. Uh, one of the most challenging things we actually had was coming up with a company name because every name we dreamed up, someone else had taken. Uh, so we've come up with Esk Investments and Sarah has produced a logo. And for those of you asking what Esk Investments is, well, this basically is the mouth of the River Esk in Donegal, Ireland. And that's where our intention is to, to live primarily when we leave the Middle East. So a little bit about our strategy. Um, we looked at all the different strategies that, that we covered in Mastermind. Um, as I'd already invested on uh, expensive properties in London, uh, we, we decided to go for a yield, uh, return investment cash flow that we could uh, benefit initially and, and continue to benefit over the, over the lifetime. Um, we decided to, to concentrate on a large portfolio of either single lets or blocks of flats. Uh, I should say here that the blocks of flats was something we had never dreamed of. Um, but as part of the mastermind journey, uh, we were assigned Billy Turoff as a mentor. Uh, for those of you who don't know Billy, Billy is a Scot uh, living in the northwest of England. Uh, he used to live in Dubai. He did mastermind, I think, in 2015, 2016, and he did the same journey we were doing, uh, except that he physically flew to Birmingham every month for, for, the, for the learning sessions. Uh, so we didn't have to do that. So Billy gave us a lot of advice opened our mind to things that we never would have thought of ourselves. And, and Blocks of Flats is one of those. I, I've often walked past Blocks of Flats and wondered who had the money or the, uh, or the verve or the ambition to buy those. And, and having talked to Billy, we realized that that was within our compass and that was the ability that we had. We shortlisted April and May 2021, uh, a couple of properties. Um, however, uh, at that time, obviously, the, there was a stamp duty holiday to prop up the UK property market. Um, and, and on the 1st of May, these sort of articles started to come out. Wallasey, where we decided to invest, was the top hotspot in the UK, um, and prices had ridden three times the national average. Now, that's a great thing if you own property in Wallasey, uh, but when you're trying to build a, a portfolio of properties and you see the property prices have already gone up 15% before you start looking, uh, it was a bit of a demotivating factor. But we sat down and thought about it. That's the part of the world that Sarah is from. And we figured, you know what, we've gone down this, this path. Uh, let's see where it leads us um, rather than second guess ourselves and we go through with this and see what the numbers stack. So a little bit about the portfolio that we purchased. Um, it's 10 houses in Wallasey, uh, a mixture of three and four beds, all terraced houses. This is four of them here. Um, we got this through a sourcer. Uh, I have to say I spent about six weeks, day and night uh, on Facebook LinkedIn, uh, every Google search you can possibly do. Uh, I think the analogy Sarah uses, I kissed a lot of frogs. I went down a lot of rabbit holes. Uh, but we eventually found a sourcer uh, who came up with, uh, with some options. Um, but it is quite a difficult search for, for people who are doing this remotely. There are quite a lot of people out there who call themselves sourcers, but very few actually that, that, that live up to the name. And that's probably the most challenging part of actually finding people you can trust. Um, this gentleman knew a, a landlord, an estate agent, uh, and a letting agent who, who had a large portfolio in Wallasey uh, and who was semi-motivated to sell 16. And by semi-motivated, these weren't on the market. Um, but I think the fact that he has seen the property prices go up 15%, uh, he had seen the possibility to reinvest somewhere else. Um, so he, he gave us the option of 16. Uh, we, we hired a local agent uh, to go through these properties for us. And he advised that we go through with 10 of them. Uh, two more, he said, were too expensive, which in retrospect um, was wrong, but who was to know? And four of them were a part of town that he advised not to go for various reasons. So we went by his advice. Uh, we agreed a price of 865 for the 10. Uh, what I would like to say here is that is the asking price. We didn't ask for a discount. We didn't negotiate it. We looked at that and we looked and did our research and we thought the price was fair. Uh, I know that a lot of training goes, well, you have to get below market value, but we thought those figures worked for us. Uh, and rather than quibble and, and lose the sale, we, we, we said we close on that. So we agreed those prices in July last year. The memo of sale was agreed in September uh, with the intention to close the sale in October, November. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as we were to find out, it takes a lot longer to close deals. And, and that's something I think we've taken away here as a key learning. 
So the transaction happened at the end of January, uh, and at the moment, uh, and these figures are about three weeks old, uh, the conservative estimate of property portfolio was about 1.1, 1.15 million pounds. Um, and we'll come to that afterwards and show you what that's based on. To be fair to the vendor, he appreciated being in the business that the prices had escalated, um, but he was very honorable. He said, look, uh, we've agreed a price. Um, the fact that it was delayed was down to our, partially our fault um, due to the, the advisors we had took some time. Uh, we agreed to pay part of his legal fees as a sign of good faith, and, and we managed to get, the, get the, the project over the line. In terms of figures, so as I said, the purchase price was 865 for 10 properties. Uh, the three beds were between 80 and 85,000. The four beds between 90 and 100,000. So just before we came on in, in your break, I just did a quick search on Rightmove. Um, at the moment, newly advertised three beds in this postcode are going 115 and up. So as you can see, there's been a massive escalation, massive inflation. Whether that's sustainable long-term, we don't know. Uh, but our feeling is this is a good area to invest in, and we're quite happy that we secured the deal when we did. Uh, acquisition costs, £73,500. That's obviously the mortgage broker fees, the sourcing fees, the legals, stamp duty. We should say one of the challenges in um, investing from overseas is that you pay extra stamp duty. It's also substantially more difficult to get lending. Uh, and the fact that I had never lived in the UK, I don't have an NI number, uh, Sarah wasn't resident in the UK, made this quite a challenge for us. Even things like opening a business bank account took us weeks. Uh, it's just, it, it's a lot of the, the systems in the UK are, are based on people living and working in the UK. We had to take some advice. We had to think outside the box. We actually end up going with challenger banks, uh, which are substantially easier, but I never thought I would be going with a challenger bank 12 months ago to be doing a business. But um, that's just where we've ended up and we're very happy that we have. Uh, so the cash in was two hundred and ninety thousand uh, pound, and this will give us a net cash flow of forty seven thousand five hundred, and an increase in equity we believe of minimum two hundred and sixty thousand pound. That's not what interest is at the moment. Um, we, we, we're buying these for the long term, uh, but it is nice to know that we believe that the investment we made and the numbers we stacked made sense. And obviously, this is something we will look then to obviously leverage in the next twelve to twenty four months when we come to refinance the projects. So a little bit, I've chosen one of the 10 just to give you a, a little feeling on, on what, what the properties are like. So this is a four bedroom mid terrace house. Uh, this is where Sarah's knowledge came in. So she insisted we got them all in areas where it was rated good or outstanding for offset for the schools. And the purchase price was 90,000 uh, pound. Acquisition cost of 7,500, which means cash in of 30,000 all in for us for this one property. The current rent is £550 a month, and, and after paying mortgage bills, everything else, that's just short of £300 a month cash flow. So that's a, that in, in and of itself is a 12% ROI, and, and we were quite happy with that. However, in the interim, uh, property values and rents have, have continued to climb. This is a rent that's probably eight years old and has never been adjusted. So our intention here is, uh, as these tenants have moved out, we're going to spend about £10,000 bringing this up to to modern um, standards, new doors, architrave, refreshing the kitchen, doing something in the bathroom. Not, not an awful lot, uh, but refreshing it up to, to, to where we think it should be. Um, we believe that will bring us up to the 135 level. If I'm honest, if we didn't spend the 10,000, we would probably get the 135 in the morning, but the way we wish to run our portfolio is we want the houses in such a state that we would live, them, live in them ourselves. Uh, so we're quite happy to make that investment and to bring it up to that standard. On the rental side, uh, and these figures come from the rental agency who we bought the property from, uh, and they said, look, if, if, you, if you refresh this up, uh, you should be able to get 775 to 800 pounds per calendar month for the property. And we've had that validated on Rightmove and Zoopla, and that's the current rental level in this area. There aren't many four bedroom houses. Uh, so that then would give us a net cash flow of 500 pound a month for a 40,000 pound investment. Uh, just to validate our, our analysis, this is, this is the house directly across the road, identical layout, identical street. Uh, it's just a little bit more spick and span. They've got a bit new paint in it. Uh, it's been a little bit better kept. This is the standard we'll bring ours up to. And this went on the market for over 135 uh, in February, and it was gone within a week. Uh, so this is something that gives us a good feeling. 
Uh, there's another one at the end of the streets now is, is for sale at 140 and it, it would also gone in a week. So we, we really have benefited from the market jumping up uh, and that's something that gives us a lot of comfort. Once the renovation is done and, and we can get to the 800 level, um, that's an ROI jump from 12 to 15. Uh, our expectation, not only for this property, but for all 10, is that the prices will, will continue to go up. And um, we believe within 24 months, we can take almost all, if not all of our own cash out of the projects in refinancing and either have a very high ROI or have an infinite one. So, so that's our intention. On future deals, as we said, we're still looking at um, similar terrace house in Wallasey, and we have another two going through at the moment, which I'll show you particularly why we chose those. Um, but the market is quite hot at the moment and getting value for money is quite a challenge. Uh, perhaps with interest rates going up this week, that might dampen it down a bit. So we're, we're keeping an eye on that. Uh, in parallel, in that part of the world, we're also looking at uh, a complex in Liverpool of eight flats, uh, the landlord that wants to, wants to sell up. Uh, and one that's probably a little bit more ambitious and going back to what I mentioned before about who goes into blocks of flats. We're looking at uh, a retiring landlord who has 32 flats spread across two Victorian houses that he has uh, renovated over the years. Uh, this would be quite a jump for us. Uh, it would mean using some of the, the skills or, or techniques we showed in, in uh, creative finance, uh, but we believe this is possible for us. So we're just doing our due diligence at the moment, making sure there's nothing in there. And this is something I think that we will, we will definitely go into and see, can we make a deal out of in, in the next six to eight months, definitely before the end of the year. In parallel, as we said in the first slide, um, we will be earning rental income in sterling and probably spending in euros. So we've actually looked at diversification and we've kind of thought a little bit outside the box. And I think that's one of the things Mastermind taught us, you know, don't be afraid to look in different directions. So we've, we've talked to a developer in the last couple of weeks about luxury holiday lets in the Croatian island. Um, this is, is a very interesting one. Uh, they have some very creative financing methods uh, it may not be for us, uh, but it's something we're quite interested to have a look at. Um, I'm also looking at a commercial Terezi development in Ireland. Uh, Ireland's a little bit more challenging in the UK. The, the loan to uh, value ratios are, are, are not as attractive. Uh, interest rates are higher. Uh, tenants' rights are higher. Uh, but this is something we think we could do and obviously would give us an income stream that wouldn't be reliant on the, uh, uh, on the FX rate between euro and sterling. And finally, um, we're looking at, we talked to a developer as well, uh, who has substantial investments in Prague. Uh, it's a city we both know quite well. It's one that Sarah goes to quite often for work, and we believe it's a city that, that has a great future, uh, particularly for service industry. And, and that's something we're going to look into in the next couple of months. So they're, they're the future deals we're looking at. Um, in terms of a review of what we've done in the 12 months since, since the first session, uh, we have completed the 10 we've just showed you. Uh, we have two more to be completed by the end of March. Uh, these are interesting in, in, in a way that we, we decided we'd try different things. So one is a modern auction where you have 56 days to close it out. So that basically, if I don't close it out the start of next week, I lose my money. Uh, so that will definitely be closed. And the other one was a, uh, a motivated seller. Uh, and this seller, um, she wants to have this property sold by the end of the financial year. So that has to be done by the end of next week as well. And she's doing that for tax reasons. And for that reason, we were able to get a discount. Uh, and again, if, you know, if we don't close that out next week, then that discount is gone. The deal is no longer there. So both of those are, are were different ways to approach the market. And we're just looking at using different strategies to get better value and rather going through the, the Zoopla right move uh, approach that, that seems to have gone very expensive. Um, so the total value that we purchased is one point, just under 1.1 million pound. Uh, we've used £362,000 of our own cash. Um, we believe in the next six to 12 months, we will put in forty-five pounds to £50,000 refurbishing these 12 properties. Um, we won't use our own cash for this. As we're both working, our intention is to recycle the, the rents coming in uh, to, to bring those up to the standard that we, that we would like them to be. Um, port portfolio value, we believe, is one three seven five. Based on the figures of today, that's probably conservative, but you know, it, it isn't our intention to flip this, but that gives us a certain comfort that we can go in, and uh, refinance this uh, whenever we wish to. Um, if we were to just take the cash out today, we should be just, just below £57,000 
cash before tax based on those 12 properties. Uh, in parallel, I, I mentioned about the, uh, the ill-fated um, investments made in London. So we managed in the last um, three months to, to remortgage those. I've taken almost 12,000 pounds a year cash uh, off that. Um, that's been inspired by going to Mastermind. It's something you know I probably wouldn't have thought of before. Uh, and that makes those properties look a little bit better and it gives me a little bit more hope that they'll eventually come good. Uh, and in parallel, um, we've also had a property, uh, an old terrace house where we, we converted a garage into an annex, a one bedroom apartment. Um, I'd heard of title splitting before, but I'd never done it. I'd never understood it. I was afraid. Having gone through the module in, in MMV2, uh, we've, we've started discussions and we've been told by an estate agent that by doing this title split, we could add £175,000 to the value of the property. And uh, that's not our intention to sell, but we will use that then to leverage to get more equity out of the project. So that in itself uh, is something we learned. We haven't achieved it yet, uh, but it's something we hope to achieve in the next six months. So if we take our year in figures, um, this is the portfolio here of 10, the top. These two, this 112,500 is the one we bought at auction. Um, this was a very interesting one because I, I know a lot of you have been watching auctions and we've been watching auctions which go crazy pricing. This auction has a very high fee for the buyer, uh, extremely high fees, four times higher than anybody else, uh, which we balked at. Uh, and then we came to the realization that actually deflates the interest uh, buyers. So this was a property that I think is worth about 145 based on, on similar properties nearby that I was the only bidder on. Uh, so we managed to get it for that price. So yes, the fees are a little bit higher than we would like, uh, but we baked that into the analysis and we think that's something uh, that's gonna be very valuable to us once we get that turned around. And the other one is the lady who wants to have this deal done by the end of March so she can do it for tax authorization. So generally, as I say, that's just uh, shy of 57,000 uh, pound. The refinancing, which we've also done is 11,700. So 68, 69,000 pounds, we believe, is the net benefit of us coming on MMB2 for the year. A little bit of top tips, lessons learned. Um, I suppose the main one for us, uh, and it's probably a great learning for me, is you know, we're approaching this as a business. In the past, uh, I property was an investment, but it was something I did part time. Um, I suppose my background and Sarah's background is project management, and we decided to use what we call smart principles, which is very seem similar to the goal setting uh, that we learned in MMB, and just make yourself accountable. So set targets, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. It, it might seem uh, very simple, but we found this a very valuable tool. Uh, we, we went away every month, and uh, the targets that we set, we, we set them into a table, and we measured ourselves against those. And when they weren't done, uh, then we had to explain to ourselves why we didn't do it. And that this, while it's very simple, proved to be very valuable, very powerful. I suppose the other one is particularly when you're doing this from, from long distance and you're doing it over a laptop or a phone, you need to be persistent. Uh, I, I can't remember the amount of rabbit holes I went down and you know, pulling your hair out and screaming at, at, at laptops and why are people not doing stuff? But you know, it, you really have to be persistent. For every 10 deals you go after, one may come good. Uh, and you just have not to take it personally and just keep going. And there were times when we're trying to get our portfolio deal over the line. We thought, you know, are we wasting our time? You know, have we put all our eggs in one basket? Um, is this something we should have done? Should we have looked at a different strategy? Uh, but in the end, it paid off, but it took quite a lot of persistence. And that's the only tip I would give. And it's something I think if we'd looked at this 12 months ago, I don't think we would realize how persistent uh, we could have been. The other one I would say, chase down every lead, no matter how futile it seems. And one of the analogies we used here, we used a sourcer who brought his properties. Uh, if I'm honest, I would be embarrassed to own. Uh, they were such poor quality. Um, but what he did, he introduced us to his power team. And through that, we actually got a link to a very good uh, mortgage broker who I think we'll be using till the day he retires or we retire. So even though the properties weren't of interest, we followed it through. And we actually got someone who really helped us. And I think without this, this company's help, we would never have got the deal over the line. So even if a lead doesn't seem like something worth following, I would say follow it through to see what comes out of the end and, and also use it for practice. And I think that was something that we, we learned to do. Uh, at the start, we didn't want to waste people's time. And then we realized, you know, 
this is something you have to invest in. Everybody who you were talking to in property has gone the similar journey, and, and they don't. A lot of people were very generous with their time and advice. Talked to lots of advisors. Um, we, we we had a financial advisor at the start. And we said, okay, this is good, but we talked to maybe another half dozen before we found the one we wanted to. And, and it's not that anyone is better or worse than anyone else. It could be the one who understands your position or the one you probably click with. And that, that's obviously human nature. And that's something we'd say, you know, don't settle on the first person you speak to. Uh, we've had lawyers tell us things that we patently knew were wrong. And we had to go around several lawyers and several other experts to prove them wrong. Uh, so by all means, take advice, but don't be afraid to double check. Don't be afraid to cross check and, and, and ask questions. Um, the next point I would say, and this is quite a challenge for some people is, we have a certain standard of the property that we would like to buy. And the property we would like to buy is the standard property that we would live in ourselves. However, we need to look at these investments and not as if you're own home. So if you're sitting for your own home, you'll probably look for something a little bit extra, particularly if it's your forever home. Um, we had to learn not to do that. I would say, you know, this is an investment after all, it's a solid house, it's where people would like to live, uh, it's a good neighborhood, it's got good schools, um, and, and this is something you have to set your prejudice aside and look on it at, unemotionally, I think is the best way to put it. Uh, we insist on buying good properties, we will do them up to the position that ourselves or our family would feel very happy to live in, um, but at the end of the day, it's an unemotional transaction and it has to be looked as such. This is the one we probably failed in, and that's why I'm scrambling for, uh, for, for next leads, uh, build and maintain a pipeline of projects. You know, we, we went down the road and we put a lot of time and effort in this pipeline of portfolios. Um, thankfully, it came through. Um, we had our reason for doing that because the rationale was, you know, if I start buying individual houses, then I have to go looking for state agents and find a state agent when you're 5,000 kilometers away for one single house isn't easy. So once we have a portfolio, it was easier. Looking back, I probably missed up a half dozen opportunities for properties that would be now be below market value. Uh, if I was to do it again, I probably would do the same thing, but I would have a port, I would have two or three other portfolios in the backup in case one or the other fell through. And that's something I think that the, we learn is a lesson we will take going forward. And that's why we're we're looking at several different streams at the moment, both in the UK and externally, to see to make sure that we have those projects all lined up and not when one fails that we've invested six or nine months and we have to start again from scratch. Another key learning, and I think it's, it's asked lots of questions. There's a great saying, there are no stupid questions or stupid answers. And I think that's one we, we talked about this morning that I, I'd learned, you know, never be afraid to ask a question. Everybody doing this property journey has started somewhere and all the questions that we thought were stupid, they've already asked themselves. So I would say, don't be shy, ask people questions. People are very generous with their time. And that, that, I think, has been a really good part of this entire process. And I suppose the, the one for anything in life, um, despite the many frustrations we had, you know, you have to enjoy what you're doing. Um, that you're never going to put your heart and soul in something if, if you don't believe in it. Uh, there were days that we were kind of frustrated. And, you know, a, a lot of what you teach, Simon, isn't that easily transferred when you're not in the country. You know, building rapport with... with uh, Motivated sellers isn't easy when you can't go have a coffee with them or, you know, talk to them over a garden fence. Um, but what I would say, we, we were both um, totally motivated in what we're doing. I think it's important to have a partner with you that goes on that journey and is willing to understand and, and put in those hard yards. Uh, but if you don't enjoy doing something in life, then I don't think you're going to do the best of your ability. And that's the one thing, you know, if you're going to get into property, make sure you enjoy it. There are ups and downs, but the ups are definitely better than the downs. So that's the end of my presentation. Hopefully I haven't uh, gone over time. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to share. It's, it's been a real, a real privilege. It's a great story, Dermot and Sarah. And it's interesting, is it? Because for all of us, it's been a rising market. Uh, it's been a real seller's dream for selling properties. And yet, if that wasn't bad enough, working remotely, of course, as Dermot and Sarah have had to do, and then not just doing things by half, they then get a whole portfolio of 10 properties in one deal. That is not an easy thing to do, working remotely. Forget the fact of setting up banks, which the rest of us take for granted, you know, is very difficult when you're working from overseas. And of course, property is always a people business. 
And you will always, if you build the right relationships, actually get a deal. And that's what happened in Derma and Sarah's position, because whereas the seller knew that it was a rising market and he could have got more money, to find someone that will take all 10 of your properties in one hit is not easy. And they worked together and made it happen. It's a great story. Let's put our hands together once more for Dermot and Sarah. I do hope you got massive value from watching this YouTube video. I'd encourage you to click on the link below to come and do the online training with me. And I've got another video lined up for you, which I think is also going to be really useful that you should watch once you've registered for the online training with me. So invest with knowledge, invest with skill. I'll see you very soon.